Hey guys, today we are going to talk about eight cards that have gone up a ton in price recently. We will start with this one, which I believe is reprinted in Conspiracy, the original one. It is now a $12 card from its, looks like $2 or $3 was its low point at Battle for Zendikar. Probably actually after the reprint, right? Uh, it just tanked in price. Very good card. Uh, one of the staples in EDH. EDH artifacts are fantastic because you can play them in so many different decks and with so many different commanders. And that's what you have to look at is flexibility, uh, raw power, and how well does this scale with other players. This one is very good. The more players you have, the more turns you can play something interesting on. All right, next one is from Modern Masters 2015. A lot of Modern Masters has gone up in price after the recent modern announcements. Um, let's talk about that for a little bit in time. Uh, modern Legacy, when they are GP in Pro Tour formats and they are stronger, that's what people want to play. People want are excited about Modern, they're excited about Legacy. And Eternal formats are just significantly better, in my opinion, than the Standard or Limited, uh, mainly due to cost and the fact that you can get very good with your deck and you don't have to change. Some people like change, some people don't. I'm the type of person who wants to play the same deck all the time and get really good at the interactions of that deck. So this Modern Masters 2015, the boat has already left and a lot of the cards have started going up. But the investment opportunity or the quote investment opportunity is in Modern Masters 2017. A lot of that is still very low and I don't think it's going to stay low forever. All right, talking about standard, we have two cards I want to talk about. Champion of Wits, which is an amazing card and was nearly bulk price, right? So it was released, then it went down in price, right? And then suddenly people realize how good the card actually is. It's a good body that you can exchange early, you can put stuff in the graveyard, you get to choose, it's not kind of this random type of deal. You draw two cards, uh, or you draw powers equal, you draw cards equal to its power, and then you discard two cards. So you draw two and discard two for two and a, blue and you have a 2-1 which is very good because you want it to die so you're going to use it as a blocker for blue which is sometimes lacks good blockers and then you bring it back and you draw four discarding two which is very much like a delve or a dig through time which was one of the most strong was one of the strongest cards in the con to tarkir block which overall was a strong block Next, we'll talk about an uncommon, uh, a braid. Instant speed, that's what makes it special. One in a red, choose one. It deals three damage to target creature or destroy target artifact. This card is very, very good against any vehicle-based deck currently in Kaldas and any future pirate deck. I don't see this getting cheaper, assuming that the next set we have pirate, uh, we have uh, pirate ships as vehicles which makes a lot of sense that's why you know when i think of a vehicle in magic i think of a pirate ship because of all the pirate ships of magic's history next we're going to look at a card and we're going to talk about what happens after spikes and this one spiked due to you see that giant spike it was due well you see two spikes right one it was at the before Dragons of Tarkir. You see that little dragon symbol? I'm assuming that happened when people knew that there would be a new set of all these big dragon lords, essentially, these giant dragons, and spiked. Then the set and then has declined. And then the second spike with the exact same decline recently uh, is due to the five color commander deck being shown. I want to say it's a good card. It is on the reserve list, so it is one of a few dragons on the reserve list. I can't name any other ones. Uh, I know, obviously, Nicol Bola's original 
is not on the reserve list. All the legendary dragons got reprinted and that tanked the value quite a bit. All right, so actually we have another Hour of Devastation card. A lot of the cards have been going up. It is, Hour of Devastation didn't follow a typical path where the cards were super expensive to begin with. This was my favorite speculation out of the set. I made a video about it. Uh, I think it was under $4 at the time. Now it is at $6. It's powerful. It's powerful. That's all I need to say. It's very, very good. Like, I'm... I judge cards based on other cards that I've, I've been playing since beta. I kind of know from pattern recognition which cards will be good and which cards will not be good. There's no way this card is not going to be good. There's so many different casual elements to it. It's a mythic. It's a horse mythic. It creates other horses. It gives indestructibility. All very good stuff. All right. Why has this card slightly gone up in price? It is kind of a joke. Um, I was watching Shark Tank and there was this like potato guy and he, he would send potatoes to you. He would charge $10 for every potato and he made like $250,000 sending potatoes to people in like two months or something, something ridiculous. And as soon as he aired on Shark Tank, he made another 250 within like a night. This is kind of like that dude. It's pricey because people like to make memes about it. The meme generation is in love with this card. And it helps that Unstable has contraptions. So if you're into Unstable and into Super Casual, then this is a perfect card for you. And that's why it is at an all-time high. No, well, not all-time, but very, very acceptable high. Previously, it spiked because people were buying it out and then making sense. Oh, because I think someone mentioned contraptions and people went berserk. Ergbog. Now, one of the things I love about core sets is there no question where the value is, right? And singles. When you had Orgbog, Court of Calling, and other reprints, Scavenging Ooze, you could be like, huh, Orgbog used to be a $40 card. Now it dropped down to, looks like, all-time low of, uh, let's call it $5, maybe? $5. This is a $40 card that was reprinted and now $5. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Chroma's Memorial and C Court of Calling. All these things, like, they're known quantities, right? They're known cards to be good. So it just takes time for their supply to dry up. And eventually, that's a perfect speculation in my opinion. One that you already know. You know Orgbog. You know if they printed, uh, you printed Horizon Canopy, which is like an $80 card now in a core set. And it dropped to like 20, maybe 15, maybe even 10. It's not going to be a 10 very long. It's an $80 card. The same with Liliana the Veil. You know eventually barring another epic reprint she will go up in price and you know snap it the same way there's some cards you just have certainty of and i love when they're printing a core set because when you're printing a core set instead of a master set you have just so many more of them and the price gets depressed like crazy like a chromos memorial look at the graph on that one look at the graph of court of call or court of calling look at the graph of any of these cards that you just and the gut feeling, it's not even your gut feeling. You don't have to do it. You can just look at what the card used to be. Wait a few years and the card will eventually move towards that older price point. Will it eventually hit that price point? No, but it will move very close. I mean, it won't be what it is when it rotates it out. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.